Welcome viewers. We are back to our theme, building a strong godly family. For in the last episode, we did consider guidelines for raising godly children. Um, actually, I did mention that we had come to an end in the last episode, but there were a few things I still feel impressed in my spirit that I should put across to the viewers that would be of help to parents in raising godly children. And I'll be making reference to what I said in the last episode. I did talk about beating children or spanking children. And that was taken from the scriptures, Proverbs 23, verse 13, that says, Do not withhold correction from a child, for if you beat him with a rod, he will not die. Then verse 14 says, you shall beat him with a rod and deliver his soul from hell. And we did establish in the last episode too that when we are talking about the rod, in the Hebrew, in the Hebrew word, rod means stick. And that stick is used for various purposes. It's used for support, it's used for fighting, it's used for protection. It's the, I, I did mention that the shepherds use it. And, and therefore, for us to um, discipline our children, we need to use the rod. That means we used to use the stick. We are going to spank children. But a caution I want to sound there is that there are guidelines for spanking or beating a child with cane. If you are going to beat a child with cane, one, you must know when to beat and how to beat. It's very, very important. One, when a child totally rebels, then it is time for you to use the rod on the child. So you spank only in response to outright rebellion or a clearly defined offense. Like a child sees a naked wire, he goes there to put his or her hands. And you want the child the first time, he still goes there, you spank a child. Next time, the child will not even think of going there when he remembers the spanking. And then again, how do you spank a child? If you're using a cane, you must get a cane that is equivalent to the size of the child. So if it is a four-year-old child or a five-year-old child, you just bring a small cane. You know, and where you want to cane, you also ask the child to open his or her hands. You don't cane a child on the head or lacerate the child's back or inflict injuries on the child. That is child abuse. He didn't say you, or you take something at times, parents take things and haul at the child because the child offended you greatly. You now take any object around you and you just haul it at the child. And you say you're trying to discipline the child. No, that is child abuse. That's, ne not, that's not the proper way to discipline the child because you might inflict injury on the child. So that is the caution I want to sound when we are spanking our children. And again, children must understand that caning, when you cane them, they must understand that it is as a result of the offense they committed. Not because dad or mom is angry with them. At times you hear children say, my mom was annoyed and so he came me or he scolded. No, it has to be as a result of the offense. So you draw the attention because you did this, because you hold a stone at the eyes of your friend, it is wrong. Or because you use sharp object and, you know, use a sharp object on your friend or something like that you make the child know the reason why you are spanking. So that is the question I want to sound when we are using the rod, physical punishment where we want to cane a child. Apart from that, there are alternative ways of also punishing a child. You can get a child grounded. 
You say, today you're not going out. Go into the room, just go and sit down in the room. You deny a child certain privileges. Maybe, okay, I won't give you, I won't buy ice cream for you today. You're not going to go out to play. But please don't deny your child food. It's very essential. Don't say that the child didn't do something, he will not eat food today. Don't deny your child food. But you can deny certain other privileges. Okay, maybe ice cream, I won't buy ice cream for you today. I won't buy chocolate, I won't buy um, biscuits and other goodies you normally buy for the child. Because you did this, it will pain the child. Remember, we are dealing with children zero to six years. You know, so there are children, such things will, will touch them. When you, 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 when, you, when you withdraw such privileges, they will feel bad. And so they will begin to amend their ways. So that is the caution I want to sound. Other ways you can use in punishing children at times, you can ask a child, stand up, go and face the wall, stand there. Stand in one place for 10, 15, 20 minutes, depending on the gravity of the offense. Or you can tell a child, kneel down and hands up. You know, there are different ways to punish children. Just anything you know that will remove, you know, comfort from the child is punishment. Anything that is a stress, additional stress, additional uh, pressure on the child, the child will not like it at that moment. Others are watching television, he said, you won't watch television, and he's watching the, the, you know, oh, David and Goliath, a very interesting program that the child likes, and the child is hearing others laughing, and, and the child is meant to be in the room because he disobeyed dad or mom. Next time when the child comes out, the child will come, the child will now begin to amend his or her ways. And then, after punishing the child, let a child teach the child to apologize. If a child hit the brother or the sister, tell the child, the one that hit, to go and apologize to the sister. Begin to teach them how to make restitution because it's in the Bible. Go and apologize to your sister. Tell your sister, I'm sorry, I won't do it again. And, you know, on and on. So it is very important that we begin to, you know, teach children all these, you know, behaviors that are commendable. It is very important that we do it. So I needed to sound that again very clearly. Okay. Now let me proceed to, that's all about punishing the children. There are still other ways, that a whole lot of alternatives, but we know we can't really exhaust them. But this is just guidelines, like I said. Another thing I want to talk about, how we can raise our godly children is by praying for your children. It is a habit that parents must form. Occasionally, lay hands on your children and make declarations to their hearing. Get your child, pray for your child, lay hands upon him or her, and make certain declarations. Maybe your child, school is about to resume, and during the family altar, you said, okay, you people will be resuming school tomorrow. After praying generally for the new school year for the children, you can bring them out and lay, or maybe in the morning when they are about to go to school, you quickly, you lay hands upon them and you make certain declarations. You are going to school this year. School is about to resume and as you are going to school, the Bible says that you are going out is blessed, you are coming in is blessed. You lay hands this semester, you shall be at the head and not at the tail. That is the word of the Lord and you will soar high. The Bible says that you have a goodly heritage. The Bible says that your lot has fallen upon you in goodly places because of the inheritance you have in God. You begin to speak these things regularly as the word of the Lord bubbles up in your heart. You begin to speak to your children as they consistently hear these things. It helps the children to know expectations that their parents have of them. And in their own quiet moment, they will begin to remember things spoken over their heavens. As I am here today, I remember very clearly the word my father and my mother spoke over my heavens 
when I was about to enter the university, I remember the word my grandfather spoke over my heavens when I went to tell my grandfather that I was about to leave for higher school, that I was going for higher school. He said, oh, my daughter, kneel down. And I knelt down and I, he made certain pronouncements. I wasn't even a born again Christian. But he spoke. And I remember that one of the declarations he said that I, I, that I will be born again and that I'm going to serve the Lord. You know, so whenever I remember, my mind goes down memory lane. I just remember these things. I said, what? Words are powerful. So parents, let's make the habit of always speaking positive words, words of God. Scriptures, speak it over the heavens of your child. And then again, personally take up each child in prayer. Whenever you have your own personal family altars, maybe when dad and mom are praying together or when dad or mom is praying together, is praying, sorry, separately. In your prayer, remember your children always. Each child has his own peculiarities. Each child has his own strengths and weaknesses. Pick up the strengths of your children and thank God for their strengths. And ask God to continue to direct them that that strength they are exhibiting, they will not deviate from that strength and use it to serve the devil on no account. Then their weaknesses. You begin to stand and insist that those weaknesses you're seeing in your children now, that the Lord God, by the power of his word, the word that sanctifies and justifies, the word that breaketh the yokes of the enemy, that that word will begin to walk over the life of your children. That the things, those sickness, weaknesses you are seeing in the life of your children at that particular time, you ask the Lord to take it away. I tell you, it will go. It is the word of the Lord. It is a word that sanctifies. It washes clean. The word of the Lord will begin to turn around your child. We begin to turn around his, his weaknesses or her weaknesses to strengths as you continue to declare. The Bible says he has spoken and therefore we will speak. He said, I will declare the decree. The decree has gone forth. So you need to decree, declare the decree. We need to tap into the promises of God because we as parents, we've caught a covenant with the Lord. I will talk more about that when I'm going to be talking about other issues. I'm going to talk about the covenant that parents have with the, with, with the Lord. And because of that covenant, we have a right to direct the course of our children's future is in our hands. The Lord has given it to us. Parents have authority over children. God has given us the power to bring up these children because God is walking through families. God is going to use the children to fulfill his purpose upon this earth. There is no way God cannot come down. <laughs> God cannot come down again with two legs to come and do anything for us. Neither are we thinking that, oh God, please God, anyway, before this happens, I will fly. You are not flying to anywhere. You are not flying to anywhere. It is we that we, see, we will be here to fight the battle. That's the way the Lord is making you and I, equipping us to equip our children. Praise the Lord. And again, when your children are sick in the house, please let prayers be made over the children first before administering um, medication. I'm not saying don't take your child to the hospital. No. I'm not saying don't administer medication. No. Let the first thing be, oh, the child is sick. You grab that child, you lay hands, and you decree the words of the Lord. That the Bible says that healing is the children's bread. That he gave us his word and he has healed us. That no weapon formed against this child shall prosper. Any talk that rises against this child in judgment is condemned. By the time you begin to speak 
and you begin to ask the Lord to lower his hands of mercy and heal this child. By the time you are done, then you can begin to look for an analgesic or whatever drug your doctor prescribes for the child. But let the first instinct not be drugs. Let the first instinct be to the healer, the one that gave the knowledge on how to use drugs. Get to him first and inquire of him. And as we do these things, the children are watching us. The children are watching us. There may be time, and you keep on telling that child, even the child that is sick, when you take the child to bed in the night, you pray for the child, tell the child, keep on praying, keep on declaring the word of the Lord, I am healed, I am healed by the blood of Jesus, I am healed. Just be teaching the one sentence, I am healed. I'm healed by the blood of Jesus. And the child keeps on imbibing that. It becomes a part and parcel of the child. So that when certain things happen, the first instinct on the child is to say, Lord, save me. Let that be the first instinct, is to run to his maker. And then another thing I mentioned again in the last episode was about fellowship, praying together with these children. I want to emphasize that prayer time should be a very interesting time. Make prayer time very interesting in the family. Bring, provide um, um, instruments of worship that the children like. Maybe they like to play piano, they like to play tambourine, flute, violin, all manner of musical instruments, you know, your children like. Provide those instruments. Children like fun. And when they come, they raise worship and they sing. So that you find out that any time it is time for fellowship in the house. The family altar, they are excited. They, do every, they start looking, oh, where is my tambourine? Where is this? And that. It's a time of, it's an exciting time for them. So we must make sure that we make fellowship time very, very interesting and avoid long prayers. When you want to pray long prayers, you can do it on your own. These children are small. Remember, as children, their attention span is not long. So pray short prayer. Give short exhortation and you are done. 15, 20 minutes, you are done with them in prayer. And then you can go back and um, continue with your own prayer. You're only trying to inculcate a habit. So you see these things because these are things you know your goal. So you are strategically doing these things. You are strategically leading these children, making them to be grounded deeper and deeper and deeper in spiritual things. I want to say that anything we do for our children at this age to make sure that they imbibe the Lord, the, the things of the Spirit, to make sure that they receive the Lord as children is not a waste of time. Now another thing I want to talk about is Observing memorable locations, like I did in the last episode. I mentioned about observing memorable occasions with the children. And I also want to add that part of the memorable locations we need to observe with, ch observe with our children, including, includes observing their birthdays. We must observe our children's birthday. It is very, very important. Children attach great importance to such things. Oh, today is my second birthday, my third, my fourth, my fifth, sixth, seventh, and all that. Please observe the children's birthday. No matter how small. It doesn't have to be lavish. You don't, if you can afford to invite their friends, beautiful. But if you can't afford that, just within the family setting, maybe that evening, in the evening meal, you just cook just an extra cup of rice and put an extra piece of meat on top of the celebrant's plate. Oh, you will make his day. Give the celebrant a cold drink, whatever the celebrant loves. Biscuits, chocolates, whatever you can afford. Let it be something special. And the child will know that, oh, mommy and daddy are doing this just for me. 
And again, other occasions you will need to observe for the child includes um, um, things like when a child performs very well in school, you know, outstanding performance of the child in school, you need to recognize it. A child takes first, second, third, you need to recognize it. Or a child did well in school, won a prize, did something, you must recognize it, particularly during the family meeting, family fellowship, the family altar. You recognize it, you give thanks to God and let the child know that his ability to do that was because of God. That it is in fulfillment of the word of the Lord that he will be at the head and not at the tail. And that they that know their Lord shall do exploits. Let the child know that. Other memorable locations you can observe in the family will include parents' wedding anniversaries. Whenever it is your wedding anniversary, you gather your children together and say, oh, today is our wedding anniversary. Maybe it's the fifth or sixth or seventh or whatever. You tell stories. You can even tell them stories about dad and mom. How God has helped you. The things God has done in the family since you got married. You see, you've been saying these things, you think that these children, they don't understand. They know. It is, it is, they are getting it into their subconscious mind. It is there. Because you viewers now, if you cast your mind back, you can remember the things your dad said when you were five years old, when you were six years old. I remember those things. So these children will always remember it. Always make up time to observe these occasions for the, 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 the children. In our next segment, I will continue and round up with some of these um, occasions, memorable locations, that is very important that parents, you know, mark at the family level because they go a long way in building and raising up a godly child. Because each time you observe these things, you always let the child know that every good and perfect gift comes from God. That the, the things you people are enjoying in the home, it comes from God. Never miss an occasion in directing your children for God. Thank you very much. And look out again for the next episode. God bless you.